When the Earth's plates move and cause friction, it will result in a sudden release of stored energy from the Earth's crust, creating seismic waves that can cause severe damage to buildings and infrastructure. These are known as earthquakes. The extent of damage done by these earthquakes are based on numerous factors. For example, does the country have sufficient resources to counter earthquakes? This is a common problem in LEDCs that often leads to the loss of life and the loss of property. To dive deeper and understand the root of the problem, my team has gone through extensive research to come up with an ideal affordable solution to aid those staying in LEDCs. Many problems arise when we are dealing with these less economically developed countries. Firstly, stronger materials such as steel are not an option, and earthquake-resistant infrastructure is usually not present due to its high cost, since the government would likely dedicate their resources elsewhere. Secondly, people tend to be less educated in terms of safety during an earthquake in general. There may also be no earthquake monitoring systems to predict earthquakes. This all leads to the catastrophic impact that earthquakes can have on LEDCs. Our goal was to keep these limitations in mind and construct a building suitable for these vulnerable places. We conducted an interview with a resident from a less economically developed country, which has recently been shocked by a devastating earthquake. Hi, what's your name? Where are you from? Hello, I am Raj from the Puri district in India. Recently there was an earthquake near where I stayed, and so my house was completely destroyed. The ceiling collapsed on itself and I had to spend over a year's salary to repair it. No! Ouch! What is happening? There's so many holes! No! What materials was your house made out of? It was mainly made of bamboo and some mud. These houses are quite popular in my country. We call them kacha houses. We use mud bricks to build these houses since they are cheaper and easier to build. It is clear that the problem at hand is that people who stay in LEDCs do not have the sufficient resources in order to counter the effects of earthquakes. How then can we provide an affordable yet effective solution for the people of less economically developed countries? Hi, I'm Jack, and this is David, and we are here to show you our design for your homes. But first off, what is our design? Well, this is our masterpiece. Which my colleague Julian will elaborate further in the later part of the video. Wow Jack, those dimensions do seem pretty complex and unconventional, but does it really help withstand the tremors of an earthquake? I'm glad you asked, David. Here is a video of our prototype withstanding the tremors from the shaker table. As you can see, our structure stands strong on the shaker table, no problem. This is our model. But what exactly did we use to build it? We used cardboard, tape, sticks, and blue tack. The cardboard was the base of the structure, while the sticks were the walls. We used tape to hold multiple sticks together to make it stronger, and the blue tack was the adhesive that held everything together. Additionally, we used a pentagon-shaped base for our building. If we were to build this building in real life, we would use wood for the sticks, and for adhesives, we would use PVA glue. Now, you might be wondering, what is PVA glue? PVA glue is polyvinyl acetate, a colorless and odorless adhesive that is much cheaper than the alternatives like hide glue and epoxy. Now, you might be wondering, why did we pick such an odd shaped base for our building? Wouldn't it just take up more space? Well, for starters, LEDCs tend to have more space than MEDCs, so we found it was worth it to use up more space and build a broader base for our building. And this would make a stronger foundation. And just because our building is in an LEDC doesn't mean it has to be a conventional shape. Another problem you may.
Another problem we may point out is the use of wood. Since we stick together multiple sticks, if we were to build a building in real life, we would require a lot of wood. Wood, a material commonly known for being earthquake resistant, is commonly found in LEDCs, and thus we thought it would make sense to invest in a structure that is structurally sound. Capitalizing on the materials available to an LEDC is essential in lowering its price and ensuring that it is effective. We mainly got inspired by our own knowledge of earthquake resistant structures and of course online sources which stated that diagonal supports for triangulation and wide beams and pillars make our structure more rigid. As you can see, we incorporated these experiences to improve its strength and make it less prone to damage from earthquakes. This key idea of cross bracing is something we had to inculcate into our building design. It is one of the main strategies we used to ensure structural integrity, increasing our building's capability to withstand seismic activity and support design structural load without falling. This is due to its strong resistance to lateral forces. Possible problems that earthquakes bring to structures include the destruction of the foundation and collapse of the building. However, we believe that our design can overcome the problems caused by earthquakes while also being suitable for those living in LEDCs. Eventually, The possibilities that come along with our simple yet effective design are endless. Since our primary material is so affordable, we will be able to mass produce and construct these earthquake resistant structures extremely quickly. The price of these large areas of land will be low, and this will allow us to construct multiple structures to serve a great number of people in LEDCs. The people of LEDCs will no longer have to worry about the consequences and effects of earthquakes as they will have a safe, secure, and cheap place to live in.